Hey, what's up everybody? Bauer Brown back with you and welcome to video number three in the map making tutorial series. So far in the series, we learned how to install the Giants editor. We learned how to make a new mod from game and we learned how to move around. Okay, all pretty basic stuff and this is going to be pretty basic as well. What we're going to be doing in this video is getting to know the Giants editor a little bit better as far as the layout, what buttons do what, stuff like that. So let's jump right into it. <clears throat> the Giants Editor is broken down into three, maybe four main areas, okay? On the left-hand side of my screen, now when I say left and right, these boxes might be a little bit different on yours because they are movable. See how this, I can change this, I can move this box pretty much anywhere I want. Just by grabbing the top of it and pulling it around, I can uh, move it to the right-hand side if I want. I can move it down to the bottom, and that goes for any one of these boxes that you see. They're all movable. So if your screen doesn't look exactly like mine, don't go into panic mode. You can move them around. You can dock those boxes basically anywhere that you want. <clears throat> so on the left-hand side of my screen, we have what's called the scene graph. The scene graph is basically a collection of all the objects within your uh, within your project, Okay, whether it's a map or you're working on a tractor or barn, anything like that. Okay, if you look at it, it's pretty reminiscent of a file tree from one of your regular folders on your computer. If you look here on the left hand side, you know, you can click open this Minecraft folder and so on and so forth, right? Um, kind of the same thing, except it's all objects from within, within your project. All right, and each one of these that you see here, these are, we're going to get into this a little bit later. Um, in more detail, but each one of these is a transform group. Now here we have a trigger, an animal loading trigger, that's an object. Um, another transform group, let's see what's in there, and that's the animals icon, and there's a light in there, okay? So if you're ever like in the forums or anything like that, and you're asking for help, and they like to abbreviate a lot, so if you see like SG, that stands for scene graph, or VP would be viewport. And viewport is this big giant square area that you see right here. Okay, see all that stuff that just lit up? That is your viewport. So if anybody, you know, is talking to you or if you're reading something and it refers to the viewport, that's what that is. Okay, on the right hand side of my screen, we have the attributes panel. All right, now if you pick an object here, you can see all the attributes for that object show up here. All right. That's uh, everything from the transform, visibility condition, so on and so forth. Um, any attributes that you want to set for that particular object are done through here. And again, a lot of this we are going to get into in more detail later down the road. Okay, so if it feels like I'm not getting too detailed on some things, don't panic. We are going to get into this a little bit more. Um, for now, I just want to let you know what's what so you can, you know, know what I'm talking about. So if I refer to your attributes panel or if I refer to the scene graph or the viewport that you know what I'm talking about and you know where to look and you know what to do. Anyhow, let's jump on to the next thing. So we covered the scene graph, the viewport, the attributes panel. Um, and also another thing about the attributes panel, um, it's not just object attributes that you're looking at. So if you pick an object here, it has the attributes. It's also if you're doing any kind of painting or if you're doing um, some kind of landscaping, stuff like that. It controls the attributes of your brushes as well. As you, know, you can see here, the radius, the opacity, the hardness, um, and so on and so forth. Um, so it's not just objects, it's also your brushes and stuff like that. So basically all of your attributes for just about anything are found through there. All right, so the next area that we want to get into is the toolbar up top here, okay? I'm going to skip the buttons on the very left-hand side because that's all like, you know, a new project, open a project. Um, it, it's the same thing that you would find like in Microsoft Word or any other program. Um, they do the same thing, right? So they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, then first button I want to get into here is the play button. This is a button that's going to get used very little, if at all. Uh, if you're working like with a tractor or anything like that, or if you any kind of particle physics that you're working on, that will let you play the animation, play your physics animation and test it out. We're not going to be doing any of that. And chances are, you know, starting out at least, and this is a beginner's tutorial, you're not going to be doing that. Uh, next to that, we're going to skip this one for now. Next to that is this local versus world mode. Uh, that's your coordinate system, right? And that 
that's another button that you're not going to really be playing too much with, if at all, again. Um, so I'm really going to skip by the specifics on that one. Uh, a really quick example of what happens here is if you look that I, I just highlighted this water tower and these red, blue, and there is a green arrow, you know, hidden underneath here. Let me pick another one there. You can see the green arrow. That's called your gizmo, right? And that, that allows you to kind of move things around, up, down, you know, left, right. And right now I'm on local mode. And if you watch those arrows there, see how they just changed? That's your local versus world mode. That's your coordinate system. I keep mine on local because I'm basically working on just local objects here. Um, so again, it's something that you're not going to be using too much. Um, so we're, we're not going to get into that one real heavy. So let's go back and on the eyeball, you see how I just clicked that one and it just dropped me down. That's your first person mode. All right. So let me get back out of there and I can show you again how when I click it, drops me down to ground level. And it's bringing me into exactly what it says, which is first person mode. And using my W, A, S, and D keys, just like you would in any other video game, you can go ahead and check things out from a first person point of view, exactly like it says. Um, it's just something that's brand new to FS22 and to this version of the Giants editor. And it's an outstanding feature. It's something that we never had before. And it's great to be able to just pop on down and look at things, you know, and, and see them just as you would as if you were in the game. You didn't always have this option and it's a great option to have. Um, so play around with that. Get to know what that one does. It's, it's you're going to be using that one pretty often. I'm fairly sure. And to get out of first person mode, just hit the escape key and you can move around using your mouse just like you did previous to hitting the eyeball button. All right, so the next object that, or the next icon on the list up there is this magnet. The magnet is your grid snapping. Now your entire layout here, if you look at wireframe mode right here, see how it's a grid? Everything is laid out in a grid, okay? So if we take this little town up here, for example, up in Elk Creek, Elk Creek ugh, I'm up in Elm Creek. Uh, the map maker, now what he did is he probably tried to keep everything nice and square, 90 degrees to each other. Um, and this way, it's much easier to do your painting and to do your layout that way. I think everybody would agree. All right, now with this grid snapping, if we take like a building here, if you look at the little arrow next to it, these are the different increments in which I can snap. Okay, so if I just move that to 15. Now, when I go to rotate this, see how it's kind of jumping? It's rotating 15 degrees at a time. All right, so it's really now makes it super easy. Now, if you go into the preferences, actually, I'm jumping all over the place here, but if you go into preferences, you can change that to 45. You can make anything or edit here. Actually, if you just go to edit. So I can make one here that says 45 degrees. Hey, no. Oh, let me go up to new. Sorry about that. Go to 45 degrees. Close. And now when this turns, it will change 45 degrees at a time. See how it makes it real nice and easy to keep everything, everything square to each other. So that's what that does. Sometimes you'll use it. Sometimes you won't. When it's turned off, See how, see how fluid that is and real real nice and easy, but it's real easy to have something not be so square. Um, so sometimes you're going to use that, sometimes you won't, you know, but it's nice to know what it does and play around with it. Again, like I said, if you have any other kind of, you know, degree increments that you want to try, you can, you know, add them to this list. And if you look at that TRS there, that's Translation, Rotation, and Scale is what that stands for. And we're going to get into that a little bit more in detail um, a little further down the road but that is your grid snapping the next button here is terrain sculpt mode um, each one of these modes we're going to spend a little bit more time with but terrain sculpting right now is basically um, if you want to add let me change this a little bit so you can see what's going on if you want to basically sculpt the terrain so you want to you want to add to it <clears throat> you can do that you can smooth it out or if you want to make a big giant hole so that's working with terrain now, as far as that goes, if you look at your attributes panel for your brush, um, that lets you pick, if you look right here at the brush type, you can pick between a round brush or a square brush. See how I changed that? Now, each one of those functions, you can assign to a different key. 
Okay, so left mount, left left mouse button. Boy, I'm just tripping all over my words today. Is for adding. Um, if I didn't like that and I wanted it to do something different, like smooth, I can change that. See. So the default off the bat, left mouse button is add. Middle mouse button, middle mouse button is smooth. Right mouse button is subtract. Okay, and like I said, each one of those you can configure if you, to do something differently. If you don't like the way it's set up or you like to use it a little bit differently, you can change each one of those. So this little up down arrow up here again is your your terrain sculpt mode. So you know digging ditches or making mountains or smoothing things out that's all done right through there super duper easy right no problems next button on the list is for terrain painting okay so go back over to your attributes panel see where it says texture layer painting texture layer and then you can pick basically anything you want so if i want to make a big animal pud animal mud pit I just picked that from the list and again same thing and hitting the left mouse button here to paint now it's not quite the same as sculpt mode because i can't hit the right mouse button and erase anything see that doesn't work and the middle mouse button doesn't work it's just kind of left left mouse button to uh to add it if you goofed up and you need to get rid of it you can either control z to undo or <clears throat> you can hit the undo arrow up top here or you can just go back and pick the uh texture that's surrounding it and paint back over it see how i just painted back over it with the original dirt color okay next button that you see up here is this little blue doohickey that's the terrain mesh paint mode that again is something that's pretty new to not pretty new again it's brand new to this version of the giants editor and it's another feature that's super duper handy you can't you can't beat it um, it was never available before and it made life so much simpler. So if you click on that button and you pick something out of the scene graph, like uh, it's replacing objects. So if you have like trees or something like that you want to pick. Let me see if I can find trees in here real quick. Oops. And by the way, that search feature that I just typed in there, that's also brand new to uh, to this version of the Giants Editor. So if you're looking for something in the scene graph... That's a really easy way to get there, right? It's just by, you know, typing in what you're looking for, like trees. And I found the uh, found the trees here. Um, so let's pick this. Now, when you, when you work with the mesh paint tool, first you're going to need to highlight the object that you're, you want to paint. And right now it's going to be an American elm tree to stage three. Okay, so I have that highlighted in the scene graph. And using my left mouse button, I just basically paint, right? So I can place trees anywhere I want to. That's what that button does. Super cool, right? And just like anything else, the attributes for that are controlled right, right through the box on your right-hand side there, the attributes panel. Um, you can control the maximum distance between the trees, the maximum and distant, minimum distance, um, and so on and so forth. Like I said, we're going to get into each one of these things more in detail in the future so let's just keep on going here so you can see what the rest of these buttons do uh this next button is a terrain info layer paint mode all right and what that is is if you look on the right hand side again in your attributes panel like i said everything is over in the attributes panel these colored squares that you can see here is representing the farmlands and how they're all divvied up whether it's fields or a collection of fields or just a big blank area you can divide that up um, through this info layer now that button there lets you do the actual painting itself it, it lets you get into info layer mode so i can pick farmland indoor mask if i want to work with that right and see how i can color stuff here and again like i said each one of these we're going to get into in more detail in a later series so you know, don't, don't get too crazy if I'm just kind of skipping around and not getting too detailed on any one of these things. But that's what that does. That basically gets you into that mode where it lets you work with your info layers, right? Okay, next button that we see here is Terrain Foliage Paint Mode. And that does pretty much exactly like you can guess what it does. It lets you paint your, uh, your foliages, okay? So if I go over here and I pick, let's see, Meadow... We'll pick harvest ready 
and I can go ahead and I can paint grass, right? And all of, all of that, if you go over to your attributes panel, that's where you can pick what you're wanting to paint, right? So if I want to put down some bushes, I pick deco bush, pick the type of bush that I want to place, and I can paint those bushes on here. Uh, this limit to texture, that's something again that's brand new to this version of the editor. If you haven't guessed, they made a lot of a lot of different. Uh, they added a lot more features to this version of the editor, and it's been great so far. Um, I like everything that they did. Maybe not everybody does, but I personally do. I think it's been really great. Um, but anyhow, you can limit that to a texture. So, for example, if when you're painting something, if you only want to paint on dirt, you don't want it to bleed over into the grass or the concrete or anything like that, you can limit that to dirt, right? So if you can see here, I'm able to paint my bushes on the dirt, but I'm not able to paint them right here. So if I skip, see how it does it on either side? It skips over. It's only painting on the dirt. Like I said, it's a great feature to have. You're going to use it tons and tons, and we're going to use it a lot as we go through this video series. Okay, so that's what that does. So, and by the way, any one of these modes that you happen to be in, hitting the escape key gets you out of that mode. All right, so next one on the list is translation mode. Now, when I explained earlier, if I explained earlier what the gizmo is, if you see this blue, red, and uh, green arrows here, basically, when you click on an object, that's your gizmo. All right, so your green is your y-axis, let you pick it up, you know, pick something up, move it down, basically, you know, your y-axis, your vertical axis. The blue is your z-axis, and the red is your uh, x-axis, okay? Now, if you hit the E key, as E is in Edward, you can see how that changes, right? And if you watch up top here on each one of these uh, these buttons here between translation, rotation, and scale. Okay, so right now we're in a combination of all three. And I can tell that because if you look at the end of this here, I can see a little square box. That, let, that lets me adjust the scale of something if I grab that box, right? And these lines here is the rotation. And the translation is the arrows. So if I click here, I only get the arrows because I'm just in translation mode, right? And if I click the rotation, I only see the lines for rotation. And same thing with scale. I only see the boxes for scale. And again, hitting E, you know, E is an Edward, your E key will also you know let you scroll through those options. So you can have all of them available at once. Or you can have just a rotation, so on and so forth. Okay, next on the list is prefabs. So if you click on that, that will open a box that lets you go through any prefabs that are currently available through Giants. Um, it's pretty cool. You can go ahead and you can uh, click on one and it'll download it and you can use it, you know, right away in game. It's pretty cool. I don't use it too often, but sometimes I go through and I check things out. So if there is you know, something that you want to implement into the game object-wise. Like if you need some icons or something like that, you can see right here. You can go ahead and download those and start using them right away within the editor. All right. And that is basically it for, well, the other things here, sorry, is reload all textures and reload textures. Um, and that, again, is if you maybe did like a made an edit to the materials or something on one of your objects, and you change the texture and you want to reload those textures, you can go ahead and click that button and it'll reload them. And this way you don't have to shut down the entire editor and start it back up just to see the changes take effect. All right. And that is it for this video. Like I said, all I really wanted to do was just go over the three main components of the editor. And that was the scene graph, the viewport, the attributes panel, and the toolbar. So basically four main components. And we wanted to go over the buttons of the toolbar, which we did. So now that you know what those buttons do, we're going to start working on going into a little more, little bit more detail of how to use specific functions. And that's going to be it for this video. I'm Bauer Brown, and I'll see you in the next one.